Hello lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. Up to this point in the story, Eli and his gang haven't had much success combating Black's corrupted slugs. They're too powerful and unpredictable, which has led to them being outmatched and having to use any tactic to live. This episode, The Slug Out, has finally given the gang their ace in the hole. After Eli's blaster breaks, he and the gang traveled to Quiet Lawn Cavern, a town quite literally modeled after quiet suburban life, in order to find Red Hook, who happens to be the only man capable of fixing blasters. I'm a little unsure how large Slug Terra is, but the fact that only one aging man can fix a blaster seems like a huge problem for the residents of the various caverns. I guess as long as they can keep manufacturing new ones, it won't matter, but it's still unbelievable no one has attempted to learn to fix a blaster. An encounter with a local gang, hired by Black, is what gives the Shane gang their ace in the hole, a healer slug that Eli names Doc. The final confrontation with this hula gang reveals that this slug can cure ghouls. I really love this little new twist in the store because obviously the characters can't face the ghouls with just brute strength. They're simply too strong. And that cartoon could have gone there to be sure. It's what other action cartoons would do. Have an incredibly strong opponent? Just introduce some new transformation or powers that let you surpass or be on equal footing with the villains. I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. No, no, no. Dragon Ball did it, Naruto does it, and plenty of other non-Japanese cartoons. The problem arises when that is the only solution a writer can think of. It brings stagnation and depending on its execution, boredom. Despite this ace in the hole, boondock slugs are still very rare, so we won't face a situation quite so soon where the Shane gang has a huge leg up against Black, and from a storytelling perspective, that's pretty good. We want our heroes to succeed, sure, but there's just something about watching them slowly work their way up to that point with small victories a la Star Wars Rebels that's really exciting. Another great thing to remark about this episode is how Shane uses something that caused a huge problem at the start of the episode, namely Pronto and his sonic snare, to his advantage later in the episode by causing the Granuker slugs to help take out the bad guys. I was a little skeptical at the plan because it should have managed to bring all the slugs down across the cavern and destroyed way more than it did. So this counts as a negative. But it also illustrates Eli's cunning solutions to problems besides just shoot until you win. I always love a hero who can use his brain for more than punching his way out of a tight jam. In conclusion, the Slug Out is a very strong entry in the Slug Terror series, and it presents viewers with imaginative solutions to problem solving and gives us something to pull us back in next episode by introducing a way for the main characters to combat this black problem. Anyway, that's it for my review. Let me know what your reactions are to this episode by leaving a comment below. And the question of the day is, if you had a boondock slug, what would you name it? Try to think up some clever medical puns if you can. Thanks for watching, and take care.